Dr. Erica Cologne here. And while there are meteor showers all night, did you know that you could find micrometeorites that have fallen down to earth? Just using a few simple tools like a magnet and a microscope, we're gonna go hunt for micrometeorites. Stick around and I'm gonna show you how and where to find them. So before we start hunting for micrometeorites, let's find out where they come from. Now, micrometeorites are falling all the time, but one source, for example, might be in the upcoming meteor shower called the Orionids. The best time to watch is in October. And what is happening is we are actually going to be on our trip around the sun. We're going through an asteroid field that has been left behind by Halley's Comet. And so when Halley's Comet goes around the sun, it leaves behind a trail of its tail of dust and ice and debris. And Earth is going to actually go through that trail. And when we go through that trail, we're going to be going off asteroids that have broken down into small rocks that are called meteorites. Now, these meteorites Meteorites are going to hit Earth's atmosphere. And when they hit Earth's atmosphere, they're going to start burning up. And when they do that, now they are meteors. When they go through that atmosphere and start burning up and breaking up into small pieces and they're breaking up into dust, some of them make it all the way to Earth's surface. Now, there's some rare pieces that scientists go all over the world to follow if we see uh, one land and there are some big chunks, but those are pretty rare. But micrometeorites are falling in space dust happening all the time down to the earth. And when the meteor hits the earth's surface, they are now meteorites. And so in your backyard, what we're gonna look for are micrometeorites. So these are super small. You need to go ahead and use a microscope or a magnifying glass to see them. And that is what we are gonna be hunting for today. So as we know, when that all that debris comes down. A lot of it lands all over. It lands in your yard and your driveway, but the roof is a great place to collect it because of those rough shingles on there. So all that debris will be sitting in there and then we want to wait for a good rain. And then you want to go where the gutter is. And that's going to be one of the best places to collect micrometeorites. So what we're going to need is a plastic bag, just like this. I prefer like a, a quart or a gallon size. It's a little bit thicker than the sandwich bags because we're gonna put a magnet inside. So when we put that magnet inside, we are gonna use this to collect and we're going to take everything we collect and put it right on this paper plate. So as you can see right here, when the rain comes down off the roof, it's gonna bring all of that dust and debris and everything else that lands on the roof down through the rain gutter. And you can kind of see it will start collecting up here along this wall. We got this pile here. So as I can see, I'm going to come over to this pile right here. It looks like a lot of tiny rocks and pebbles, and we are going to start searching for micrometeorites in here. And to do that, we have our magnets in our plastic baggie, and we're just going to take that and we're going to put it right in that pile, and we're going to slide the magnet right through there, hoping to pick up anything that is magnetic. Now, this is not all micrometeorites, but we're hoping some are in there. So whatever is collected on that magnet, we're going to go ahead, reach in our baggie, pull that magnet out, and that way everything drops right onto our plate. We're gonna do a couple swipes, so we have enough to look at with our microscope, just like that. We're gonna get a good collection on that plate, and then we're gonna take this plate inside. Now, I feel like right now, we have a great sample size to go look. We don't want too much because then that's gonna be a lot to look at in the microscope. So we can use a pocket microscope to go ahead and do this. We can use a hand lens, like as long as it's like a 10X magnification or you can use a stereo microscope. So let's take this in and let's go look and see if we found any micrometeorites. All right, when I bring our sample in, this is just how I like to search for the micrometeorites. I'm sure there are much better techniques, but this one works for me. I like using a stereo microscope. You can also use just a pocket microscope, or like I said before, you could use a hand lens, but it has to be at least a 10x magnification. The reason I like to keep it right on my plate is a couple things. I can see on my paper plate, it has this colored line on the outside. Is I use this as a guideline when I'm shifting and looking at my sample and I kind of shift everything so it goes to the outside edge just like this and then I take a marker and I'm going to mark my start line and I'm just going to make a line right down so I know right where I just marked it right here is where I'm going to start and I'm going to search and I'm going to move in a circular pattern when I'm looking under the microscope. So I'm going to know right now when I start I'm going to look 
at all of the debris closest to my outside marker and then when I hit my mark that I marked again I know I'm going to move a little bit in and I can go in close to the circle when I hit it again I'm going to keep rotating through the plate now you do want to have practice you need to have maybe a little bit steady hand because you can see it doesn't hang onto the base all the way so you just need to hold it flat and when you're looking I find my starter mark just like here I bring it into focus and then I can go ahead and I can just start moving it around and we are going to begin searching for our micrometeorites. So what we're looking for is while micrometeorites come in a lot of shapes, the easiest one is the spherical shape. And this is because the friction of entering the atmosphere melts and heats that micrometeorite and the surface tension of their liquefied elements pulls them into this spherical shape. So we're looking for little spheres that are shiny, less than a millimeter across, and those are gonna be the easiest shapes to find. When I think I found a micrometeorite, this is how I like to collect it. I use a bamboo skewer, a little dish of water, and I use a post-it pad. I just flip it up so the sticky part's on the upside. Now I'm going to dip the tip of that bamboo skewer in the water because when I use, I have to use the microscope to go and look for my specimen, and then I'm going to attach it to the wet end, and I'm going to bring it over and make sure it sticks to that post-it. So check it out. This is how we're going to collect it. I hope you enjoyed that video. Hey, let us know in the comments if you found some or if you have a better place to go hunt for them. We would love to hear about it. If you like that video, here's a book plug for you right now. My book, Science in the Wild is out. That's where you can find this and 52 other activities for Science in the Wild. Go check it out today.